we've had a large wave of outpouring of support for our campaign and a little bit of concern for a lot of concern about what he said. Uh, but but the, the backdraft, all of the, of the rest of the things are where is our economy, where are our jobs, and how is it that Jim Moran can raise taxes and spend money and ha for 20 years? I mean, the debt was about $3 trillion when he came in. Look where it is now. It's over $13 trillion. He has no concerns with that. He's happy with that. He's happy with his earmarks. He's proud of his earmarks. Mm -hmm. And if he is reelected, he will continue to do the exact same thing as well as uh, his perspective on the military. By the way, it's, it's, it's our position here at Scoreboard that, that we need term limits, that once anybody's in power too long, whether they're Democrat or Republican, they get this kind of arrogance of power. Are you a term limiter? Amen, brother. I believe that the Founding Fathers had no concept for anyone, regardless of party, to serve their entire life as a congressman. I think, I think inevitably, and Jim Moran is a walking, talking, or I should say screaming, advertisement for term limits because he has lost touch. He, he will say and do just about anything in order to get reelected. And what we need are people of character, some leadership and integrity who are willing to work across the aisle to find solutions for the American public instead of figuring out how to get reelected. All right. Uh, by the way, how many terms we got to run, but how, how many terms are you going to limit yourself to if you're elected? David, I would like um, to just five terms, I think, is the maximum, but I'm not looking at how many terms I'm going to serve. I'm happy to serve this constituency for one term, if that's what it takes, okay. to start to balance the budget and get us back going. Please have your view viewers go to www.murrayforcongress.com, and uh, we would appreciate your support yeah. in these last 96 hours. Colonel the Patrick Murray, thank you very much. for We'd, we'd invite uh, you, Congressman David. Moran on if he wants to come on, but he's got a lot of answering uh, to do here. Uh, and thank you for your service to the country, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. Tonight's panel includes Lee Hawkins of the Wall Street Journal and host of Wall Street Journal Weekend Conversations. Congratulations on that one. Angela McGlown, she is a Republican strategist. And from L.A., Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall. Leslie, first to you, how does this guy excuse himself from what he said? Well, David, I'm with you because I'm angry. I'm angry that we only seem to be outraged when the military service is attacked by the left to the right, which it should not be on either side. Where was the outrage were attacks against John Kerry? Or McChrystal's column with Rolling Stone magazine against his commander-in-chief violating the military uh, code of justice. So I'm with you, David. I'm angry. Uh, this is politics, and this is dirty, and we shouldn't attack the record. However, when it comes to spending, Cutting of spending that's a will affect thing. the military. Yep. No, no, no. no. That's, I agree with you. That's a different thing. And, Angela, the fact yeah. is is that there is waste in every government department, and that includes the military, by the way. Waste. The Pentagon, you know, those $600 yes. clauses, there is waste <laughs> in the Pentagon. It is, but I think it's pretty sad for Jim Moran to make that comment when the Pentagon and Arlington Cemetery is both in his That's incredible, system. isn't it? It's sad for him to say that. And, David, I've always said the public service is a sacrifice, not a career. However, our career military men and women make the ultimate sacrifice because if we don't have them, we wouldn't have community service. We wouldn't be able to vote. So I think it's, it's sad and you have a lot of military people that live in this district and I think that might make a difference in this election. Well, he's 13 points ahead, but what he has to realize is that some of the greatest public servants that we've ever had in this country uh, come from the military. 24 states presidents have served in wars. There are six others that saw no action but were in the military. You're talking Generals Washington, General uh, McCarthy, some of the greatest people that MacArthur, people that we have. And what's typical, I think, is this strategy of trying to turn people's strengths into a weakness. And we see that. Uh, a lot in it's, campaigning it's, now. It's, it's very strange. But, Leslie, do you think, I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant to take anything that Moran said seriously because it was such a ridiculous statement, but do you think the fact that his opponent, Colonel Murray, served in the military disqualifies him from talking about cutting government expenses because he was getting government paychecks for so long? Actually, no, and I don't. I don't think that's a political issue. I, I think it's more of a common sense issue. Uh, quite frankly, his service in the military was that. This would be another government office if he's elected, and that would be it's not a just new another opposition. Another government office. When you sac when you're willing to sacrifice your life every single day, it's more than just another government office. 
Well, no, but you, and in answer to your in answer to your question, I think that he can make decisions regarding the military, just as many people yeah. in the House and the Senate and even the White House do, even if they haven't served in the military. Right. So the fact that he's served is admirable, but it's irrelevant in a sense to his decision going forth to his constituency. And David, this seat has been very hard for Republicans to take. I mean, Moran has been in there; he's been. Which is surprising when you think it's it's the house of uh, of our fallen heroes. Exactly, but I think now that this statement that he made might make a difference. I think it's forcing us to take another look at the way that we're perceiving our veterans in this country. If you look at HR professionals, 97% of them say that these are some of the best employees in the gotcha. workplace. You have to realize that. Absolutely. And we want to hear from you, by the way. You can send an email by logging on to our new website. Just go to foxbusiness.com slash scoreboard. You can check out videos from the show and see what is coming up right here tonight on Scoreboard. Coming up on deck, the law.